Luke, this is fantastic, is it? It is, Gerd, yeah. The, the news never stops coming, does it? Every day we get new information. But uh, yeah, two things. The, the Pfizer vaccine is stable in your freezer, which is really good news for storage. Obviously, minus 70 was the previous temperature. And that's very challenging for all kinds of reasons. Mm. But they've just submitted to the, to the US administration, the FDA. It's stable at, uh, at, at minus 20, a regular freezer that we all have in our houses. And of course, it's partly in company with Moderna. So Moderna, they, their vaccine was stable in a freezer. So I guess, I guess Pfizer were promised to, to test their vaccine and, and they've now confirmed it's stable at that, at that temperature so it's good news for storage and, and wh- why would they have thought 80 is that just because that's what they did for safety reasons during the trial so that's what was in the in the data that was submitted to these regulatory authorities yeah, I mean, it's or, these are RNA vaccines. RNA is known to be pretty unstable. That's kind of okay. a well-known thing. So therefore, minus 70, minus 80 was felt to be the safe bet. But of course, they hadn't tested minus 20, had they? You know, whereas Moderna had. And then they were prompted into testing it. And lo and behold, they're both RNA vaccines. So it's no surprise, really, that, uh, that Pfizer would have the same storage. There's a slight difference, though. Moderna keeps in the fridge then for 30 days. So you take it out of the freezer, stick it in your fridge. Pfizer only have a five-day test on that. So I bet they'll now say it's stable in the fridge for 30 days as well oh, and then wow. they can compete fully with Moderna so it may get even better yeah. but it looks as if this makes the whole thing more convenient obviously Yeah, it makes it much easier to, to roll it out on a, on a much larger scale in some of these mass vaccination centres you don't need minus 80 degree yeah. uh, um, uh, fridges or freezers uh, at, at all of them at the, the Helix in Dublin or the Seven Oaks in Carlow or wherever it happens to be the, the other piece of good news I mentioned then that it's 85% effective after a single yeah. jab. I mean, this is the, the line the Brits went down, that they, they hoped that they would get this information. They really went with the kind of the single jab first policy. They did. And we saw that yesterday. Yes, yeah. so it was a 9,000 uh, person study, which showed 85% efficacy. But it's strange because the Pfizer study themselves, which was 20,000 people, by the way, that they said 53% after the first shot, you know, so this seems to be higher. So one question is, how come the Israelis have a higher rate compared to the original Pfizer study? But even still, it's intriguing, isn't it? And, and does suggest that a single shot will offer substantial protection. And then you're right, the uh, the British may have got it right. They, they took a slight chance on that because they were basing that on kind of a hunch mm. you know whereas the Pfizer data said 53% the new data says 85% but everybody look at it this is a spectacular vaccine there's no two ways about it I mean the, the data just gets better and better I guess is the way to think of it Yeah and I, I don't think anyone's expecting that we would uh, completely change our approach overnight but certainly you'd imagine the, the, the authorities and the health authorities here and in Europe and in Brussels that this is something that they should be looking at isn't it? Well, well, you'd stick with the two shots for the moment, I think, because it's the first study to show 85%. And as I say, the numbers are slightly smaller, but I suspect it's correct, by the way. But we'll see. Israel are the canary in the coal mine. They're mm. releasing loads and loads of data every day. It's spectacular. 80% of that population have had one shot. And if this data is correct, they're now protected to 85%, you see. So we're going to get loads of information from the Israelis. It may turn out that one shot suffices and then the direction will change, say in two or three months, only give one shot of Pfizer, no need for a second shot. Mm. But I suspect the second shot really really kind of um, copper fastens the whole thing is the way to think of it. It is. It, it, like I know it's, there's a lot of doom and gloom today with talks of extended lockdowns, Luke, but it strikes me there's, there's just unrelenting good news on vaccines, certainly on the scientific front. I mean, when it comes to supply and the logistics and the, the manufacture, there's been a few hiccups, but, but it's been remarkable, not only the pace they've been developed, but even how effective they've been. The, now, now this news about storage, that it's easier to store them. Uh, the, the trickling in of more and more information about how effective they are in terms of stopping transmission of the disease as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, the news gets better and better. I, I suspected there will be a few bumps in the road, by the way, with this vaccine, because that can happen with vaccines. You get, you know, issues might arise. Not a single issue has arisen with this Pfizer vaccine. And remember, you've cause something like 8 million people have had the vaccine in Israel, something like 20 million in America, and no negative signals in terms of rare side effects or whatever. So, so far, so good. It looks as if this RNA technology is everything it's cut out, cut out to be, basically. Now, again, we'd have to wait a bit longer, I guess. But, but absolutely, they've ticked every box that you'd want ticked at this stage and Moderna will be the same so I suspect that'll be just as good because it's a very similar kind of vaccine so you're right it's, we're, we're in a good place at the moment with the vaccine campaign no question Yeah well listen like I said a lot of doom and gloom so it's nice, it's nice that there's a bit, a bit of good news on a Friday Luke great to talk to you as always 